Let's start talking today by talking about <clears throat> priorities. Because it seems there are a lot of people in Washington that are completely out of touch with understanding what is important to average Americans like me and you. And yes, I consider myself about average when it comes to hopes and dreams and the things I fear as a parent or a husband. I think like many people, I'm pretty average. I believe that there is a higher power, one that is far superior to what we are as humans. I don't think the world started with a mud puddle and a lightning bolt. There are far too many things that simply don't fit that narrative. I believe that life is as important as any other factor when it, when it comes to people in the human experience. I believe the greatest joy comes from being thankful for what you have and holding your family close. And yes, we all have members in our family that to make that tough, but family is still incredibly important. And I believe this nation, the United States of America, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, is the most important and generous nation in the history of the world. I believe that faith, family, and country are my immediate priorities. I would do just about anything to defend each and every one of those things. I mean, I would do it even if it meant putting my life on the line or giving my last full measure of devotion to protect them all. Because my God, my family, and my country mean everything to me. We live in a nation that allows us to pursue and protect those priorities unlike any place else on earth. Our nation, unlike any, was conceived on the idea that everyone has the right to live their life as they see fit, to look out and provide for those they love as they see fit, and to pursue happiness any way they can. And we must defend those freedoms now more than ever because they're under attack. And that's why priorities are what we must discuss as we look to the future. Because sadly, my friends, the priorities I just laid out are not the priorities of too many politicians and bureaucrats that are far too happy to pursue the easy road, a road where you get the short end of the stick and they, well, they continue to accumulate wealth, power, and strangely enough, status with others in those same circles. Today, I can assure you that resident Joe Biden has no idea what your priorities are. Honestly, he doesn't care. He cares about power and wealth and getting as much of both as he possibly can. And it doesn't matter how he gets there as long as he does. And resident Biden is like far too many living here today. They don't care about your God or your family. And it's pretty clear they don't care much about the country either, no matter how much they say they do. Let's talk about you for a moment. How much is the price of gas and groceries hurting you? That should be a priority, right? Something they should fix. And yet, Incontinent Joe and the left keep plowing forward and plowing you under, frankly. So what does the inflation and the cost of gas mean to regular Americans? We're going to go to bite one. That are trying to make ends meet? What does it mean for those that saved money and have been forced to use it? Well, let's find out. Bite one. Go. It's gone. It's depleted. No savings. That's it. We've gone through our retirement savings more quickly than we had anticipated. I can tell from having the same budget that I've had before all of this, I'm, I would get less. It seemed like the bags would get smaller and smaller every time. Oh, yeah, the bags get smaller and smaller every time. Yeah, more money, less food. More money, less gas. More money, less hope. And the priority for the socialists is often the religion of climate change. And the globalists and their followers pray at that altar daily, but they'd better repent or they will pay a very high price in November. That I can assure you. Let's go to bite number two. CNN and its reliably left-wing commentators watching the Fed jump interest rates, trying to keep up with inflation, know this is a real problem. Not for Democrats, but for America. Bite two. Listen to this. Go. And, and there's no question that in some big ways, this administration, including the president and some of his closest economic advisors, uh, got inflation wrong. We've heard that uh, correction from some of his top officials, including the Treasury Secretary, uh, Janet Yellen, saying, yeah, last year when we were saying this is probably going to be temporary and transitory, we were wrong. And we're going to keep right on rolling because we'll give you example after example of what is wrong here. We'll move to bite number three because I've told you from day one this is all about terrible energy policies. It is. It is about terrible energy policies that began that first day with an executive order shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline. It has been a domino effect ever since. The dominoes just keep getting bigger and flattening more and more Americans and people around the world. 
And as Kevin O'Leary points out, this could be corrected right now, but Biden won't do it. It is uh, bite number three. Go. It was a policy mistake by Biden when he came in. You reversed the mistake. All you have to do is jawbone. The oil market's a futures market. Just announced you're going to license three new refineries on the East Coast. Also announced we're going to re-examine the, the, the XL pipeline. We're going to give back the leases in Anwar. We're going to give more carbon direction to understand what the costs are. All of those policy mistakes could be reversed by just getting up and jawboning it. You could take oil down below 100 bucks if you got more accommodative towards the future production. Yeah. Now, Biden may not do that. That's on him. And you'll pay dearly for that. Say, I have insurance. a bridge. I yeah, we're going to jump straight forward into bite four because anti-energy zealots like globalist John Kerry is the polar opposite of common sense. He rails against the collective intelligence like it was just laid out right there. Bite number four, go. And energy security where he is driving a lot of the thoughts now about, oh, we need more drilling of gas. We need more drilling of this. We need to go back to coal. No, we don't. We absolutely don't. And we have to prevent a false narrative from entering into this or... Again, uh, pun intended, we are cooked. A guy with a bigger carbon footprint than most city blocks, lecturing the rest of us. How galling. And you have to wonder, why are they not concerned at all with the well-being of you and ordinary Americans? Why not? Why do they lie to you about how electing Republicans will mean the end of democracy? They're the ones attacking the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion and the freedom of mobility. They're the ones promoting open borders and sexualizing kids at ever younger ages. Yes, the priorities of the socialist Democrats is not what Americans prioritize. And the idea that, that I would undercut your freedoms or any honest conservative is absolute hogwash. Conservatives today are like liberals of days gone by. We believe in freedom, the freedom of speech and religion and to assemble. We believe in more freedom, not less. We believe in God, family, and country. And those simple principles also just delivered a congressional seat in Texas to the Republicans for the first time since Reconstruction. And the conservative Hispanic woman who was born in Mexico that won that seat is the future of America because her priorities are spot on. Married to a Border, border Patrol agent, Mayor Flores, and, and others are, are the beacon of hope. People like Glenn Youngkin of Virginia, beacons of hope and common sense going forward. We'll continue this conversation in just a moment. This is The Steve Gruber Show.